morning, Hallsville ISD community and family. We're here this morning to talk about TEBA, uh, which is Texas Virtual Academy Hallsville. And I know throughout the year we've had a lot of questions. And one of the main questions is, what is TEBA? What does it stand for? Uh, what is this virtual program all about and how does it operate? And so this morning I have with me the director of the Academy, Ms. Julie Smith, uh, and she's going to talk with us uh, throughout this presentation, just giving some information in general about the school and how it works and how it functions. Uh, I want to introduce Julie Smith. Uh, she's been with the district for quite a long time and, and has served in various roles and uh, administration, and we are super excited about the job that she has done running and operating uh, TEVA for the school district. And so I'm going to actually uh, go ahead and dive into the presentation uh, and you'll hear Julie kind of interject along the way and we're going to just share a lot of information with you about it. So we're going to get started with the program and then um, Julie will speak as well. So the first thing I want you to know is that TEVA is a tuition free online program of Hallsville Independent School District. Uh, and it serves independent learners with a passion for knowledge. This is a very unique online academy uh, and it's licensed to serve all students in the state of Texas. And so uh, we work in a partnership with parents to awaken the power of learning in their children. The result can be greater academic success, confidence and independence, both in school and beyond. TEVA originally began in Hallsville in 2013. Uh, after we suspended the program for one year, we wanted to take some time and research um, the effectiveness of the program, how we could better use and serve the students, not just in Hallsville ISD, but utilizing this program to serve students from all over the great state of Texas. Uh, TEVA reopened during the summer of 2018 after much consideration and research and, and thoughtfulness put into how we could reopen this program to be as effective as possible, utilizing our, our folks here in the district and the programs that we currently had in place. Here's some information and, and interesting facts about TEVA. TEVA provides students across the state of Texas the opportunity to learn in the ways that are right for them with these categories in mind. A rigorous interactive curriculum from K-12, the leading online K-12 curriculum provider and advanced ed accredited company, an individualized approach to learning, CTE courses for high school students, instruction from Texas certified teachers, an active support school community, and social and extracurricular activities as well. The vision, the vision for the school, it's, it's very in line with what we do here in Hallsville ISD as well, and it supports the vision of this district. Uh, it's for building a legacy of learning to promote successful futures. The mission is to facilitate purposeful learning in a caring environment. And the values, I love these values because again, it aligns with where we're going with Hallsville ISD. Passion, accountability, courage, and trust. What a unique system to have in play for these students all across the great state of Texas. And then habits, things that we try to instill in these students each and every day and the staff. We live on, we serve big, we lean in, we honor consistently, and we stay on mission. So I'm gonna ask Julie for just a second, talk about this vision and this mission statement that is so important to you guys in TEVA and how you feel like it supports the vision and the mission of Hallsville ISD. Well, the first thing I would have to say is, is the, the mission is about putting kids first and what students need. And that's what Hallsville is all about and that's what K-12 is all about as well. Uh, we try to instill in students the desire to learn. We try to facilitate the way they learn. We try to help them, motivate them, support them in, in all the ways that we do even here at the brick and mortar. Excellent. And you guys do a great job. Um, I know when we reopened the campus, one of the, the tenets that we looked at in operating the school was how are we going to function with our staff internally and the external staff that, that uh, K-12 utilizes. And so we looked within and, and we found quickly Julie Smith was the perfect fit for leading and directing this, this program. And we've, we've got several other great staff that we'll talk more about at the end as well. Here's some other information that I think is just really unique about this program. If you look at where do the students come from, one of the questions that come up all throughout the year, where are these students, where do they come from, how do we serve them, great questions. And, and what you'll look at as we're going through this present, presentation are slides uh, what we call heat maps from student populations all across the state. The slide you're looking at now shows pretty much a population all across, up to the Panhandle, way out west, 
all the way south from Corpus Christi uh, up as far as almost to the Oklahoma border. What a unique program to have in place that serves students again from all over the state. The next portion of that slide is the staff. When you look at the staff, uh, pretty much represents the same uh, population again from all over the state of Texas as far north as the Oklahoma border, uh, way out west in El Paso, and then as far south as, as Corpus Christi in some areas. And so pretty heavily uh, populated in the center uh, and northeast sections of the state, but, but again, from all over the state, which I think is very unique. Um, how many Hallsville students are enrolled in TEVA? That question has come up a lot throughout the year. Currently, we have 11 yes, students from, from our own brick and mortar. Who can enroll? Another big question that we hear a lot. Any students in grades 3 through 12 who reside in Texas, they have to reside in Texas, and is eligible for full-time enrollment, provided they can show proof of enrollment in a Texas public school during the previous school year. Students must submit a report card, transcript, or progress report as proof of prior enrollment. I'm going to let Julie talk just a little bit about our current enrollment. Uh, right now that is 5,711 students. Julie, if you would, talk to us about kind of the first 30 days on the job and what we thought projected out maybe to have been at one point uh, a 1,000 students was a really big number for us. Talk to us from your perspective how that number started and how it grew to over 5,000 students today. Well, when we first started this, um, we, were, we were concerned about, you know, what if we didn't have any students and where we would be. And so everybody just dug in and said, okay, we're just going to start the enrollment process and we're going to see, see where we land. And uh, it was, like you said, within the first 30 days, it grew tremendously. Uh, we, did it did. Not, it did, we did not expect it to happen so fast. And we had to, uh, it was basically all hands on deck with K-12 staff and with, with our staff, trying to get students enrolled and get the information into the system that we needed. It's just continued to grow. I will say the virtual school is more uh, mobile than the brick and mortar. I've, you know, I've been in education for 27 years and, and you know, pretty much the students that you start with are the students you end with, with a few variances. But with this system, it just offers some students flexibility and some move in and out uh, on, just on a different basis. For instance, we have a, a, a student who medical condition, so they needed to come to us for, for a little bit, but then once that medical condition was resolved, they were able to go back to their brick and mortar. Yeah. So we've seen that, that mobility in the numbers and it, it fluctuates, it changes from, it changes on a daily basis even. It's just that we have to make sure that we keep up with our staff and we have the supports in place that the students need. Absolutely. Talk for a minute, Julie, about how unique this experience has been, different from a brick and mortar administrator Talk how that's been unique and what are some of the challenges that you face as an online administrator? I think the hardest thing is just we um, we have some boundaries in regards to TEA and the Texas Virtual School Network. So sometimes the flexibility is not there, so we have to work within that realm. Yeah. And so having to adjust to that and to figure out the systems and to know what we can and can't do yeah. is, is been, uh, has been a challenge for me. There's uh, been nobody to really compare to or talk to or collaborate with in that regard, so we just kind of had to learn it as we go. Um, but it was great having a parallel system or parallel partnership with K-12 because they were able to offer their expertise uh, in the areas that they have been in in the past. Wonderful. Well, and again, current enrollment is 5,711 students. And another question that comes up in relation to employees and administrators and teachers, who can work for TEVA? And, and again, you saw the heat map from all over the state of Texas. TEVA employees have to be Texas certified, so they must have a Texas certification. Uh, we still employ highly skilled teachers with a minimum of three years of teaching experience preferred, of course. Uh, we will hire teachers who live in all regions of the state, as you've seen. Uh, more than 5,000 teachers have been trained by K-12. That's a lot of teachers, uh, again, from all over the state who have been trained. Allowing them to leverage the latest educational technologies, expand their skill sets, and meet individual student needs as necessary. Uh, the number of staff currently are 248. And so again, just a program that has really been amazing to watch from its inception to current day, how it's grown and, and, and multiplied. And, and now the things that we're really focused on and have been focused on since day one are accountability. I wanna talk a little bit more about this part <clears throat> of TEVA. Accountability works a little differently for the virtual school and, and it's under what's called an AEA. It's an alternate 
education accountability system. <clears throat> what does that mean? I'm going to go through a couple of facts and then I'm going to let Julie expound on that. Uh, it's available to schools, AEA, what's called AEA, is available to schools and campuses that are dedicated to serving students at risk of dropping out of schools and qualifying for evaluation under different accountability indicators. In order for schools to be considered for AEA status, certain registration criteria must be met, including 75% of the students must be considered what's called at risk at fault PM submission and 50% of those students must be in grades 6 through 12 at the fall PM submission. Uh, some other facts related to accountability. Domains are scaled differently than regular accountability. There are no distinction designations that can be earned. For 2018-19, no CCMR rating or graduation rating will be included in our accountability. As TEVA met the criteria for registration, we have been approved to be evaluated under the alternate, alternate accountability. Let me kind of summarize what all that means and then I'll let Julie expound on that for just a little bit. Basically this year, for the 2018-2019 school year, uh, TEVA will stand as a campus that would be graded as a Hallsville campus just as every, every one of our other brick and mortar uh, campuses would be graded. And so whatever grade they receive uh, will be also linked, as I said, to the district's accountability rating. We do have legislation that is in act right now that is literally on the House floor, and I'll talk a little bit more about those in just a minute, that will provide separate accountability moving forward for the 1920 school year and the 2021 school year gives us two years to see how do those students continue to perform in the online virtual learning environment. So again, we've got current accountability that meets the AEA model. We have applied for that. We've become eligible for that. And we'll see how that uh, affects Hallsville ISD's rating. Uh, we've got some early numbers. Uh, we're still tentative to say how that's going to play out. Um, but we are looking to see how those grades will roll out. And so um, at this time, somewhat comparable to how most campuses are doing, uh, we, we ebb and flow with those ratings just like we would any other campus. And so I'm going to let Julie speak for just a second on what she's dealt with in accountability. Okay. Uh, this is, this is uh, hard for me because I know how important accountability is to the district. Yes. And I know our high expectations and how we want our students to perform. So when it came to looking at accountability for TEVA, it was a concern because we are 75% at risk, actually 79% at PEAMS reporting. And we have students that are two and three years behind in reading and math. And so my main focus, our main focus this year has had to be growth. It's just how can we grow the students? And I know K-12's philosophy, and this is another reason that I'm so in support of them, is their philosophy is we're gonna grow a student every year got to have growth. And so in regards to the domains, uh, domain one is when you just tabulate all of the tests divided by the number of testers. Uh, part two has to do, uh, you have an A part and a B part. We're not uh, eligible for the B part because we don't have other schools to compare us to that compare apples to apples. And so we don't, uh, we don't qualify for part uh, two, part B. And then domain three is the, the growth. And that's, that's the one that we're really striving to hit. And in all of these, it, it all depends on that scale score. So we'll have a score and then they'll basically tear it up for what we would be. And uh, we're hoping to do the best that we can and we don't want to hurt the district in any way. Uh, but we are caring about our students and trying to help them grow. Absolutely. And the point I want to emphasize here is whatever, however TEVA does, it again is reflective of a tremendous amount of effort. Uh, from Julie and her staff and the teachers of TEVA, but we will also be able to reflect the separation, uh, even this year, the separation between how Hallsville ISD brick and mortar students did and how those TEVA students did. Uh, this year we will be graded on that the same, but again legislation is in the works to completely separate those two grades out. And I think that's the message that we want to be sure is very clear. Um, one, how does accountability affect with TEVA students counted in? how would accountability be affected without those students counted in, and then how that looks moving forward pending the state legislation. And so I want to thank again Julie and her staff uh, doing an incredible job in, in working with these students. They have really taken the ownership and the pride uh, and, and put forth the effort it takes as if they're every single one of these kids are Hallsville kids. And, 
and really they are uh, because we've adopted them and, and they're part of our school system um, and, and we're graded on these kids and, and, and we receive funding for these kids. Uh, another question that has come up is how does the funding mechanism work? Well, it's very similar. It's exactly similar to how we get ADA for the students for brick and mortar. Uh, the formula can adjust a little bit from the state based on completion rates. And so uh, the students do have to complete. There may be 5,000 plus students enrolled, but we will get funded on how many students actually complete courses. And so we've talked about that and looked at that from a budgeting aspect, and that's how we know uh, the amount of funding that we will receive. Um, it's, it's been very productive for us. The revenue has been extremely positive. Uh, in year one, we're at minimum $500,000 to the plus. The next two years, we will be at minimum uh, $650,000 to the plus each year. And so uh, right at $1.7 million that's guaranteed to come to the district from this operation alone. And that's, that's really been helpful for our district. The next thing I wanted to talk about and kind of wrapping up is just again, the legislative impact uh, that we have two bills on the floor that are, that are being considered. And uh, I was invited to come down and testify uh, to the Senate Education Committee, which was quite an educational experience for me. And I learned a lot just about our Texas legislators and how the process works and getting these bills through the system. Uh, the two bills to watch are Senate Bills 1045 and Senate Bill 1455. Those are the two bills that we're watching go from the Senate floor over to the House. They've got to work through those education committees on the House side. We feel like that's going to happen rather quickly, and then they should be on the House floor within the next couple of weeks, pending uh, no need for an additional special session by the Texas legislators. So hopefully we'll see those bills gain traction. Again, the biggest impact from, from those bills would be the separate accountability for TEVA from Hallsville ISD brick and mortar students. Uh, and we look forward to seeing the results of that. I want to finish uh, the district with, with this comment and then kind of wrap up and talk about the staff for TEVA. Uh, the district was praised as trailblazers and champions of virtual education by Senator Hughes's office, uh, the Senate Education Committee. They were very impressed and I think didn't realize how large uh, of an operation this had become, how effective the program was being from what we had at the time, from inception about a year ago in 2018 to current day, there's been a tremendous amount of growth in this program. And so uh, we are currently the largest partner in the state of Texas for virtual school online learning. Uh, I believe also we're one of the largest in the country that's a public school. There are charter schools that have this partnership, but we are one of the largest public schools in the United States operating in this manner. And so it's hard to, sometimes it's hard to wrap your mind around just how big this operation has become. The focus has been and will continue to be on the quality, how that will impact student learning, how it will impact accountability, not just for TIVA, but especially for Hallsville ISD. Those are the biggest components that we're focused on with this operation. And so I wanted to put this video out just so that you guys have information on it and, and be able to answer any questions that you may have had. The last thing I want to do again, uh, I would like to show you uh, how virtual school operates within the district. We have a department set up within central office that Ms. Julie and her staff occupy. We're going to walk over there in just a minute and let you see the staff and just kind of what the day in the life of TIVA staff looks like for Hallsville ISD. And so Ms. Julie, I do want to finish uh, if you'd like to say anything just about the program in general or your staff, and then we'll take time to walk over and, and look through the office. Well, I basically just want to say that I could not have done any of this without the staff that I have and without the, the wonderful partners that we have in the district and we have with K-12. Uh, this is not a single person's job. It is a massive undertaking and it takes all of us. Uh, the team that I have here at Hall School, uh, it, it came about, it was a it, it, it was a God thing, I'm just going to say that. It was a God thing. I've got a wonderful staff. I've got Renee Bradshaw, she's the registrar. Uh, my PEAMS data entry folks are Ashley Anderson, Terry Rhodes, and Rachel Meadows, and they do a wonderful job. And then I have uh, Carol Black, she's our counselor. And then Station McKinney is our special programs director. And it takes all of us collaborating together. This has been a learning experience. It's been a challenge. Um, but it's been exhilarating. It's been so, um, it's been, it's just a different way of learning and it's a need that's out there for students and it's, it's something we needed to do and I'm glad that we're doing it. And the typical day for us is we're, 
virtually attending classes, we're virtually attending uh, assemblies, we're going to faculty meetings, we're going to DDI meetings, data meetings, we're going to PLC meetings. The team is working diligently to get the PINGS data in correctly and that's an ongoing process especially with the ebb and flow of students that we have and I just cannot express my gratitude enough to this district, to, to our staff, and to all the, the folks in the district who helped make this a success. As, as you can see again, Julie Smith has been the right person for the job. Uh, just the passion and, and dedication that she and her staff uh, have exhibited have been incredible uh, and reflects our, our vision statement of pursuing excellence in education. So I want to thank her and we'll go over and meet them. I did think of a few other questions uh, that maybe uh, have come up throughout the course of operating the school. One question is, does enrollment, does TIBA enrollment have any effect on UIL alignment and sports and things of that nature? The answer is no. Uh, no, they do not. Uh, those students are separate from that and, and do not have any effect on that. Uh, and then again, as far as graduation and, and receiving a diploma, um, those students do have a Hallsville ISD diploma, but it actually says TIBA mm -hmm. Academy on that diploma. Uh, and it's kind of unique because they will have their own graduation ceremony coming up June 7th. Uh, we've been by, invited to go out and speak and be a part of that. So I think over 300 students, mm -hmm. seniors, will graduate uh, from their own ceremony there. So again, just a very unique operation and we look forward to seeing how it progresses. Let me finish with this. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me uh, at jcollum at hisd.com or call the office at 903-668-5990. We'd love to help you with any of those questions. Thank you. And we're gonna go over and, and visit the staff for just a few minutes. All right, so guys, what you have here um, is the actual setup of the office space for Central Office for Texas Virtual Academy Hallsville. Uh, Miss Julie Smith and, and all of her staff that she talked about uh, earlier on the video here, this is where they actually operate. And you can see in here where they're set up to do Skype meetings. Um, they can actually log in and check on the classes. Um, they have constant communication uh, with another outside office in Louisville and the K-12 staff there. And so I want you to just see here, here's the actual physical space where these ladies uh, come in and, and the daily operations happen for virtual school. Our first person that here is Renee Bradshaw. She is our registrar. She is responsible for everything in regards to uh, the PEAMS data entry overseeing it. Uh, next is Terry Rhodes, Terry and Rachel Meadows, which is next to her, and Ashley, who's in the center of the room. She, they are our PEAMS data entry clerks. I cannot tell you how invaluable they are. Um, it requires dedication. Uh, they have to be very uh, succinct with what they do and they have to get the information right because this is where our funding comes from and I greatly appreciate them. Station McKinney is our special ed director, uh, special programs director and uh, she works in conjunction with K-12. They have a special programs director as well. Uh, she's responsible for 504, EL, um, special ed, just any of the inner workings of that. And Carol Black is not present today, but she is our counselor. She works from home and she takes care of GPA, rank, uh, courses, just everything that has to do with the students and what will happen on the, the graduation side of things. 